presentation is the report of the uh, is re in reference to the report of the community committee um, deputation regarding uh, Hagley Oval cost implications, uh, which is page 69 uh, of the community committee, and I'd like to invite Lindsay Carswell to uh, come forward. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name's Lindsay Carswell. I've been around here quite a number of years now. But just in case some of you may not actually know me, I'm a retired school teacher and I taught accounting and economics for a number of years um, in the um, far north of New Zealand. Uh, this concerns um, the... Um, I'll get started again. On the 10th of December last year, the Community Services Committee requested an urgent staff memorandum regarding the full financial cost, both capital and operational, of the Hagley Oval development to the Council. In my opinion, the provided memorandum lacks expe expected detail. Now, the next part is lifted straight out of that particular report. I'm not going to read it all out. It's the first part there, number one, the capital costs. We're listed there. Um, the funding for those capital costs. Now there was 954,000 put aside originally, 2009-19 long-term plan, and since then, then in the 2012 plan, another 1.65 million, and then the, in the renewals and replacements in the 2012-13 annual plan, 759,000, and then. 300,000 from the capital governance pool. But I want to make a few comments on some of those. <clears throat> the original cost of 2.64 million was originally assumed to be the total costs of the development. Overall, <clears throat> there has been an increase in the capital cost from that figure of 2.64 million to $3.6 million, an increase of 41% on the original cost. The next two items I want to have a closer look at, funding the extra capital costs, the $300,000 capital governance pool. Now, I've examined past minutes of the council meetings and indicates that funds from this source received council approval, or at least a subcommittee approval. The question I pose is, should staff have obtained approval at a full council meeting? The renewals and replacements, the $759,000. The memorandum as provided fails to disclose the relevant headings for this expenditure in the 2012-13 annual plan. Whether under the Recreation and Leisure, which has 1.1 million set available from re renewals and replacements, or from the parks, open spaces and waterways, which has 6.2 million available under that heading. This cost, that's the 759,000, this cost should have been identified as a separate cost and not hidden away in a larger figure. Two, the revenue expenditure, or the operating cost, the memorandum report, reports that the net operating cost for council is budgeted at $300,000 per annum. Currently, we are tracking to budget. Memorandum does not disclose whether this expenditure was included in the approved 2012-13 annual plan. Where did it come from? Where, where was, where's it coming from? Point three, capital renewals. Over a period of 10 years, this is straight from the memorandum, there will be a program of capital renewals and replacements to ensure, it goes on and on, I won't read it all out, but there's an extra $20,000 there, which is mentioned, plus 400000 may also be needed <coughs> to be set aside for um, drainage and irrigation if needed. First of all, the $20,000 is an operating expense, and it should have been included in two of those. The $400,000, if used, will increase the total capital cost to four million and six. $3,577 from the original cost of $2.6 million. 
an increase of 56 per cent. Other expenditure. Council's enforcement, this is from the memorandum, Council's enforcement and traffic management team will, from time to time, control and evaluate processes and practices at events to measure compliance. The cost of this service is built into the respective team's budget. The cost of measuring compliance and necessary enforcement of the consent conditions should not be borne by the ratepayers of Christchurch. It should be handed over to Canterbury Cricket, see the cost. I want to make some further comments now out of this memorandum. In my opinion, the memorandum provides insufficient information to enable a clear understanding of the actual costs of the project and funding sources. In particular, detail as to where, as when or how some of the listed costs were approved. Furthermore, the significant increase in the capital costs does little to instill confidence in the accuracy of the operating expenses. The project appears to have the potential to be a financial burden for council ratepayers. I find it difficult to understand how senior staff can commit the council to such expenditure during a period of financial austerity resulting from the impact of the earthquakes. Let's have a look now at some of the points here concerning Canterbury Cricket. Owing to the strict conditions imposed by the Environment Court, a whole folder full of them that they have to comply with. <coughs> Owing to those strict conditions, <coughs> including the number of matches that may be played, and even the number of spectators that some of them can be present, at the Oval, Canary Cricket may find that the expected financial return may not eventuate. Don't forget too that a lot of the, uh, the major fixtures, especially the World Cup ones, the uh, World Cup organisation will be taking a major share of that, plus New Zealand Cricket. I don't know what the split will be, but I think you'll find Canary Cricket will get very little. In August 2013, the Council requested that a business plan be submitted by Canterbury Cricket <coughs> excuse me, to show how they intended to fund the proposal, and this is the, what the minute said, that Canterbury Cricket provide within the next two weeks a business plan to council, to councillors and council staff showing how they intend to fund the proposal. That was the Council meeting of 29th of August 2013, item 13, Hagley Oval, proposed development works and lease. Canterbury Cricket responded with a one-page funding plan. And there it is on the last page of the handout I've given you. That's what they provided. That was called a business plan. Some of the kids I talk could have done much better than that. In my opinion, the council needs to be satisfied that Canterbury Cricket <coughs> have the financial resources to maintain the consented facilities and fund the compliance costs. I submit that the Council should request a detailed business plan, a proper one this time, for the income and expenditure over a 10-year period based on the court-imposed consent conditions. Now finally, but I'm concerned that Canterbury Cricket will seek further financial assistance from the Council. Who is going to pay for the long-term maintenance of the pavilion once the <coughs> dust has settled after the last ball has been bowled at the World Cup Games at Hagley Oval in 2015? Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? There appear to be none. Look, thank you very much for the extent of your um, uh, deputation. Um, this is a, an embedded part of a uh, committee report, so we won't deal with the particular okay. matter um, at this point. But thank you very much uh, for coming to the council. <laughs>